Although EVE Online is a game where you can choose a number of benign or relatively non-belligerent activities, player versus player activity is a huge part of the game. One can say that as long as there's a completely player-driven market based on competition, that this makes virtually everything in EVE some form of PvP. But how does one learn combat PvP without the game punishing your self-esteem until you're crying with shame or rage quitting? I'm going to share with you the easiest ways to learn the deep, rich aspect of the game that is ship-to-ship -ship player versus player combat. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, the EVE Online Corp, Interstellar Booty Hunters. Are you downtrodden? Does the system shun you? Do not fear. We understand you. Come laugh in the face of fear. Out with the system that entraps you with doubt. Become the weapon that you were always meant to be. For the best treasure is forged by fire. Fly with the interstellar booty hunters. And may the forging begin. Okay, so when I say learn how to PvP, I'm not saying learn how to kill targets or even always win. That would be a topic for a different video. There are many, many ways to simply get a kill or rain down the misery upon others in this microcosm. I'm talking about learning things such as what ships and tactics counter other ships and tactics, or things such as range control, position, which ammo or drone types to use in what situation, how to know the practical differences between buffer tank, active tank, or speed tank, how to catch targets, how to extract yourself from a losing fight, and how a small ship might defeat a larger ship, etc, etc, etc. All this can be learned and improved upon, but at the risk of stirring up trouble, I'll explain what is a complete waste of time or what is sort of a waste of time. Because many people have many, many misconceptions about what makes you a good PvP pilot in this microcosm we call EVE Online. Firstly, suicide ganking doesn't make you good. What do I mean by suicide ganking? I mean getting a cheap, high firepower ships such as a catalyst and finding a defenseless ship such as a mining barge and killing them before the Concord police arrive to kill you. This is sometimes upscaled to attack battlecruisers that take out missioners in their battleships, but this is still a relatively repetitive process. You're not fighting another player who's trying to destroy you in turn. Merely a Care Bear pilot, as we call them, who's trying to have a quiet night of mining or missioning, perhaps while they're having a glass of wine, you're going to learn very little PvP fighting skill this way. Second, being a line member in a large fleet blob will also teach you very little. A fleet blob with dozens of pilots relies on sheer numbers to win over the tactical and strategic skill of the fleet commander. While you're free to shut off your brain and be what's called an F1 monkey, Meaning your job is to activate your weapon and shoot the designated target by pressing F1. Now let's drill down a little deeper and cover where in space the locations where you'll learn either a lot or a little depending on what's going on there. Okay, high sec or high security space. The problem with high sec is that most of the PvP content takes place in either one of the major trade hub systems or the major trade routes between those trade hubs which means station games, especially at trade hubs. Now, station games can be quite frustrating. Uh, your opponent can always choose to PvP near a station where he can dock, reship, avoid taking aggro, or simply choose not to fight at all. This means there's a lot of baiting and waiting. You can declare war on another corp of your choosing and perhaps get a good fight, but the fighting isn't frequent unless you've war decked dozens or even hundreds of other corps. There are big alliances that specialize in doing this, but for the single corp or the single individual, this can get very pricey. Null security space, or player-owned space. Nullsec is a place of extremes, where the number of people in a given system may fluctuate from zero to hundreds. As you get closer to the home planet of the major SOV holding player alliances, the count of pilots sharply begin to rise, and when the capital system is reached, there are suddenly hundreds of pilots around you who can shoot you. On the other end, when you have the support of dozens of other people in your alliance within a jump or two, the opportunity for one versus one or one versus a few other pilots is severely diminished. Again, you're not going to learn a lot from this. Not as much as you might have hoped. 
Oh, your kill board may be golden with or green with hundreds of kills, but those are mostly group kills. Now sometimes the really good fights that teach you things do happen in null sec, but like high sec, those fights are more rare than you'd like to think. Now wormhole space is an interesting animal. This can be a step up from the blob warfare of null sec, however everything is ridiculously covert in wormholes. You're talking about submarine warfare in space here. Everything starts with a cloaky ship. Fights escalate with other ships that come in on the battle, but finding fights in this dark underground wormhole network can take a while since the only way to navigate is by using probes to locate wormholes. So how about Losec? Now we're getting a little warmer. Some parts of Losec are very empty, other parts of Losec are hopping mad. Now gate camping in Losec can teach you some things, and on a Stargate there's only so many things you can do. Sentry guns on a Losec gate prevent you from being overly aggressive in a frigate, which will destroy small ships easily if you're not careful. But more than that, there can be a lot of waiting on gates, especially on slow nights. Now the most populated parts of Losec are the faction warfare areas. Basically, the way this works is that every major NPC empire has a militia of capsuleers or players that work for them in parts of Losec against their opposing empire. The Galenti militia fights the Caldari militia, and the Mimitar militia fights the Amar militia. The fighting takes place in faction warfare complexes, which are classified by size from novice to large. The size of these complexes also restricts certain ship types. So for example, a novice faction warfare complex can only be entered by Tech 1 or faction frigates. No Tech 2 frigates, destroyers, or larger ships can enter that complex. However, players other than militia pilots are free to enter the complex as long as they pilot the right ship size. This means that if you only want to fight other Tech 1 or faction frigates, you can do this at the novice faction warfare complexes, rather than larger ones or open space which somewhat evens the playing field, although there is no limit to the number of those frigates that can enter that particular complex. Liberal use of the directional scanner will allow you to more easily choose the fights you want. Now the thing about the ships in EVE is that even though a frigate has less firepower and utility than something like a larger ship, the actual use or flying skill of that ship is scalable up to destroyers, cruisers, battlecruisers, and higher. Meaning that if you can knife fight in a fast frigate, you can usually manage the slower paced fights of cruiser sized or larger ships. So talking about the overall game, joining Faction Warfare is certainly an option to learn PvP, but you don't have to fight in Faction Warfare. Now the drawback of Faction Warfare is there are many friendlies about, so you can't shoot them without serious problems. And also, you can't dock at an enemy station. And finally, the standings towards the opposing faction will gradually worsen over time. Another option is simply to go to these faction warfare areas and engage whoever you want. Dock wherever you want. You can go to Losac regions such as Bleaklands, Metropolis, Placid, and especially Black Rise, where you'll almost always find a fight. Building upon this option, you should choose the right ship. Let's assume that you think you're okay at PvP or a complete scrub at PvP. You don't have a lot of ISK. So go with the Tech 1 Frigate. Choose two good frigates for the tried and true PvP fit. There are many good options here. There's the Tristans, the Incursi, the Rifters, Punishers, and many more. So fit up about five of each of these two good frigs. Plan to lose every one of them. Then fit up five of some other type. Now eventually you may settle on the certain type that you favor and that's okay. Get really good with that frigate. Then later, as you get good with that frigate, try to choose a destroyer or a cruiser that is the scaled up version of that frigate. So for example, the Tristan, it being a drone frigate, the next size up with that would be the destroyer or the Algos, and the next size up with that would be the Vexer. Or if the Rifter is something you like, the next size up would be the Thrasher, the next size up would be either a Stabber or a Rupture. But you should plan to keep going back to your frigate frequently. Why? Simple. You can travel more easily through Losac without being caught in a frigate. Gate camps have trouble blocking most frigates. And you'll catch more yourself with the frigate. And you'll find more people willing to fight you in your frigate. There's this myth that bigger is better. It isn't. Having a big expensive ship doesn't make you better, doesn't make your flying better, and doesn't mean you'll win. It just means you have a big expensive ship that will eventually die especially if you have no actual flying skill. Now there is also one other very very good way to learn PvP 
in all ship types, arguably the best way. This is going to require a friend, hopefully one who has the skill points to fly a wide variety of ships, but really anybody will do. This other method will not teach you how to find targets, but it will teach you everything about what your particular ship or fitting can do, what works, what doesn't work, etc. The method is to use Singularity, the EVE test server. The Singularity is open to any Alpha or Omega EVE player. It's a mirror to the real server, but nothing you do on the test server impacts your game on the real server, so you can lose 10 ships without it ever impacting your real game. On top of that, at certain stations throughout the test server, all items, ships, modules, weapons, are only 100 disk. Not millions, not tens of millions, not hundreds of millions, but 100. So other than faction or dead space modules, you can buy anything, fit up virtually any ship, any which way, and test that ship against a friend who's a sparring partner. Now this works great because what may look great on paper doesn't actually work in combat. Somebody says they have 500 DPS. Can they actually apply that 500 DPS? Well, let's test it and find out. Test server is great for this kind of thing. I try stuff out with friends in the test server at least about once a week. And although this will teach you a lot, you must be careful not to become too spoiled by the test server. You must be willing to actually implement the lessons learned from the test server on the real server. The test server should only be used as a means to an end, and that end being a demonstrably competent PvP pilot in the microcosm that is EVE Online. Now remember to be humble, not to the point of being self-deprecating, but keep in mind that no matter how good you think you are, or the bling of your ship, there is always a way for you to be defeated. It is also very possible to lose without making any mistakes whatsoever. This is the game. Remember, also that no matter how many times you've lost, if you're capable of learning and have an open mind, you will eventually find hard-fought victories, and in EVE, they're extremely rewarding. Thank you for watching, Space Friends. Be sure to subscribe and like. I love to hear your comments. Consider contributing on Patreon at patreon.com slash resurrected. I really appreciate any small support you can give there. And if you're interested in low-sec PvP, you could consider joining our corp. My in-game name and the corp name are in the description below. Thank you for watching Space Friends, and peace out.